everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Magical Jill, and today I have an awesome Pokemon video for you guys today. So, we're going to be talking about the top five darkest Pokedex entries for some Pokemon, and it's gonna be really cool, and I'm really excited about it. I also have my husband here. Hello, I am the husband. Jill, you're gonna be doing more Pokemon videos. You're not only gonna be a Pokemon channel, you're still gonna do Sailor Moon, the doll reviews and everything, but we wanted to do another one of these so that all of the kind people who subscribed after your last video knew that it was not just a one-off. This is a topic you're going to be actually talking about a lot. Yeah, I'm really excited for, for it because I really love Pokemon a lot and I've been playing it a lot lately, so I'm really excited to share my passions on this channel. And forewarning, we pronounce things wrong all the time. It's a skill that we have, <laughs> so I'm sure there will be a Pokemon that we pronounce wrong. Uh, because we still have to catch up on the anime. We're actually going to rewatch that. Jill, you haven't seen all of it. I stopped after Sinnoh, so we're going to be watching that at some time too and making some videos on that. I stopped watching after Misty and Brock... Um, left? Probably, yeah, Yeah, left. So, so you stopped after Johto. Yeah. And then Brock keeps coming back over and over again. But He's my favorite. While. I love yeah. him. Brock is pretty great. So before we hop into it, if you enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Jill's going to be doing a lot more of them. Let's start with the first one. Number five. One of the darkest Pokemon in the entire franchise has to be Yamask. And now it's not your boy, that would be me. It is <laughs> Yamask. Yamask is, is really upsetting when you read his Pokedex entries. I picked a couple of the saddest ones. There's some others that are very similar in writing, but in Pokemon Black, it actually says, each of them carries a mask that used to be its face when it was a person. Sometimes they look at it and cry. That's horrifying. Is it? And then in white it says, These Pokemon arose from the spirits of people interred in graves in past ages. Each retains memories of its former life. So basically, this Pokemon is walking around remembering life as a human and carrying its old human face with it at all times. Yeah, pretty much a recreation of what it looked like, but like more generic, I guess. And then I guess when you're a trainer and you capture it and then you do battles with it, it must be thinking to itself, you know, I used to be a Pokemon trainer back in the day. Now I am the Pokemon. Yeah, there's a lot of really messed up stuff about this. I will say that when it evolves... There's implication, perhaps, through the lore that it forgets that it used to be a human. But as just Yamask, it is just a person trapped in the body of a Pokemon, pretty much. It's, it's, it's very sad. It's horrifying. I think it becomes more horrifying when you find out that this means that there is definitely some form of reincarnation or rebirth with spirits sometimes mm -hmm. in Pokemon. We already kind of knew that, but this is like a very dark interpretation of that yeah and also the fact that they don't only remember being human they also will sometimes look longingly at their old face and miss being a human they that will look so at sad. it and weep oh my gosh you know one of the things that i am a little confused about on it though is how did the scientists find out that you mask remembered being a human like did they ask it how do they understand its answer? Like, I'm, I'm just a little confused on that one. That I don't know entirely. Um, how the Pokedex works has never been 100% confirmed because, you know, when you discover a Pokemon too, because in some games, you know, they, they're actually new discoveries, there still are Pokedex entries on them. And, Weird. and sometimes there are Pokemon where it's like, it is said that or legends say that, and you know, okay, well, this isn't 100% confirmed. Maybe this isn't true. We don't fully know. It's just said this. Mm -hmm. uh, but with this one, it's just straight up. Each of them had a mask. They used to be a human. This was their face. It's very factual. It's, it's very to the point. There's not much getting around how sad and creepy it is. Number four. The next one we have is actually Phantump. And this one is a little bit of a doozy. So in Pokemon Y, it says, according to old tales, these Pokemon are stumps possessed by the spirits of children who died while lost in the forest. Worth noting that it says according to old tales. Uh -huh. So because of that, we don't know 100% if that is true, but there's a lot more that is true about them. And there's reasons why they think that because in Sun, they say these Pokemon are stumps possessed by the spirits of children who died in the forest. Their cries sound like eerie screams. So it's weird because there's there's conflicting information between Y and Sun. Mm -hmm. Sun just states it as fact. Y states it as old tale or legend. Maybe they thought it was legend and then they confirmed it as fact later on. I don't know how you'd confirm that, but maybe. And then it gets kind of worse. 
Yeah, it does. In Ultra Sun, it says, By imitating the voice of a child, it causes people to get hopelessly lost deep in the forest. It's trying to make friends with them. Yeah, so this thing isn't even trying to hurt people. It's just lonely. Yeah, they're just lonely and scared. But then here's the implication. It says imitating the voice of a child. So is the implication that it's not actually a child now? Or that it was, and now it's just, you know, copying that old voice. That is so scary and weird. It's almost skinwalkery. And then you get to S.H.I.E.L.D. with a voice like a human child's, it cries out to lure adults deep into the forest, getting them lost among the trees. It's almost more sad it's not trying to hurt them. You know, like if it was malevolent, it would be scary and it would just be scary. Uh But because it's trying to make friends with them, it's almost scary and very sad. Yeah, because then if it gets those children lost in the woods, then doesn't that make those children become another phantom? So well, isn't it adding it to its own kind? Well, it's mainly getting adults lost in the woods. Oh, yeah, but, but I'm sure if, some children follow it, too. Yeah, what if a kid goes? There's also the sword entry. After a lost child perished in the forest, their spirit possessed a tree stump, causing the spirit's rebirth as this Pokemon. Again, it's in our rebirth or reincarnation thing. Mm-hmm. No, I think what's terrifying for me about these, and actually scary about the last two, is the fact that it not only confirms rebirth and reincarnation, mm-hmm. almost as fact... But also, can you imagine living a long life and a good life and then you wake up as like a Yamask or you're a kid and you're having a fun time and you get lost in the forest and you die and it's horrible, right? Yeah. And you wake up as a tree stump spirit. That would be really horrible. That sucks. Then people start coming around throwing pokeballs at you and you're like, what? That's true. (laughs) It all just seems extremely confusing. And these, I don't think they even remember they were human because it doesn't say they do. That's true. They probably don't then. So they just think they were a Pokemon the whole time. Oh, that's... I don't know if that's more sad or less sad. It's more just scary. Yeah. Number three. The next one we have is Palisand. In Pokemon Moon, it actually says... Buried beneath the castle are masses of dried up bones from those whose vitality it has drained. Yikes. Yeah, that pretty much means that it has taken Pokemon and it's implied in some other entries that they've taken people and drained its vitality and then just left its bones underneath it. Yeah, which means that if it moves, it kind of drags those around probably with it. Yeah, it's really icky. Ultra Sun says each of its grains of sand has its own will. Palisand eats small Pokemon and siphons away their vital essence while they are still alive. Yeah, it basically eats them alive. Isn't that horrible? Yeah. It is genuinely horrifying. And they pretty much know what's happening. One of the other entries uh, that was in their Pokedexes, I don't remember which game this was because I didn't write it down, but it basically said it also possessed humans to help build it up. That's crazy. It was really bad. And then in Sword, it actually says, Palisand is known as the Beach Nightmare. It pulls its prey down into the sand by controlling the sand itself, and then it sucks out their souls. Well, then it makes you wonder what happens to their soul. I mean, it sucks out their vital energy, but what happens to the soul of the person or Pokemon that gets killed by one of these things? I don't know. I guess maybe we'll find out someday. It's also bizarre because there's very few accounts of people actually dying in the Pokemon games to Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So it's weird to know that this Pokemon can kill people and Pokemon, but you you don't really hear too much about it. And it's not considered super dangerous because you actually like go up to them and catch them in multiple games. Yeah. So... You would think that a lot of people wouldn't want to let other people around these Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. You'd think they would have like executed them or something. Or like, or like cordoned off. What, what would you say? Like walled off the areas around them or something to keep yeah. people away from them. But apparently, no, the human and Pokemon eating sandcastles are fair game for all the little trainer kids of the world. <laughs> pretty bad number two the next one we have is actually a new pokemon it is bramblin it first showed up in scarlet and violet so the only pokedex entries we have are from scarlet and violet it says in scarlet a soul unable to move on to the afterlife was blown around by the wind until it got tangled up with dried grass and became a pokemon wow and then in violet it says not even bramblin knows where it is headed as it tumbles across the wilderness blown by the wind, it loathes getting wet. 
I don't know if getting wet was really too scary, but the fact that it used to be a person and now it's just a tumbleweed heading nowhere. Yeah, and it was like trying to go to whatever heaven is in Pokemon world or whatever, mm -hmm. and instead it became a Pokemon. And I, it, we don't know if it remembers being alive or not either with that one. A lot of these like scary ones are about human beings becoming shitty Pokemon. That's true, actually. Not, not even like really good Pokemon. Like it's not like they got reincarnated as a Charizard. Yeah. Or something really cool. It's like no, you're a you're a tumbleweed. Yeah, and like you're the kind of thing that people only catch to fill out their Pokédex and don't actually use. Which is even darker because that means some some person might catch you and just leave you in a PC box for a thousand years. That is so sad. Yeah. <laughs> Number one, yeah. This one is a classic and that's Cubone. There's a lot of entries from Cubone that are very, very sad. It's maintained the solidarity of its entries for the entire series. In Ultra Moon, it breaks it down to something we've been seeing for a long time, which is Cubone wears its mother's skull on its head. So no one knows what its bare face looks like. However, it's clear that it's always crying. That is so sad, because it's always crying about its mother's death. Yeah, Moon talks a little bit more about that if you want to read it. Yeah, in Moon it says, The skull it wears on its head is that of its dead mother. According to some, it will evolve when it comes to terms with the pain of her death. Which is horrible. Yeah. And horrifying. Yeah, it's very sad. Yeah, so this thing, its mom died and it picked up its mother's skull and put it on its head as a mask. Yeah. And as a helmet to protect it. And now it just mourns its mom its entire life and does nothing else. And cries all the time. And I think one of the worst parts about it is in Sun, they actually mention when it thinks of its deceased mother, it weeps loudly. Mandibuzz that hears its cries will attack it from the air. And Mandibuzz is its natural enemy. Yeah. So this thing doesn't only feel the pain of its mom's passing which is horrifyingly sad, mm -hmm. but also when it cries to grieve, it is then attacked by natural predators yeah. and they try to kill it. It's horrible. It's really yeah. sad. It, that This is one of the Pokemon that I think is happier probably being caught by its trainer and being loved and nurtured. Oh yeah. And being saved from the Mandibuzz. Yeah, I think so too. And there is some hope for some of these Pokemon. Like for example, Yamask, like I said, when it evolves, it can forget that it was a, a human before, mm -hmm. or at least that's what the dex entry implies. Mm -hmm. um, and with Cubone as well, I think when that becomes Marowak, there's a little bit more hopefulness to it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to have a sad life its entire life, but it is still really sad how it starts. It's pretty much just a little kid who feels alone, who is grieving their mom's death. Yeah. And I think Phantump is actually an interesting Pokemon too. It seems like it would be fun to have in your party because it has kind of a unique look. And then I think it becomes Trevenant later I think so. on. Yeah. And I think the saddest one on this list is probably Bramblin just because of how lame a Pokemon it is. Yeah. And, you and weren't even born a good one. Yeah. Most people probably won't play with that one in their party. <laughs> Everybody makes fun of Bramblin. I found like two trainers ever with Bramblin and they were a pushover. And every other person I've talked to in real life about Bramblin is like, yeah, that's one of those throwaway dumb Pokemon. Yeah, it is. It's just a throwaway dumb Pokemon. And it's really sad because it's like, you know, you probably could have be, been reborn into something good at least. Yeah. And instead you became Bramblin. Yeah. I feel like that's the saddest fate. One of the saddest fates in Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, it is. You could look at your own face and cry. That sucks. But at least you're a cool looking Pokemon. But at least you're not Bramblin. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much what it comes down to. <laughs> So we really loved making this video and talking about different Pokemon with you guys. It's really fun to make Pokemon videos and I'm really excited to do more on my channel in the future as well as doing more Sailor Moon and doll reviews and other stuff like that. I was wondering if you guys have any suggestions for more Pokemon top fives in the future. If you have like scary Pokedex entries that you know of or anything like that, just let me know in the comments and I think it would be really fun to do. If you enjoy this more scary or creepy content, Jill and I did start a new channel, which is the King of Creepy. That is a horror narration channel. We do nonfiction and fiction. Although I guess some of the nonfiction, we can't tell if it's really fiction or not. That's true, but that's true. <laughs> we do read scary stories from around the internet. I'm also gonna be doing some stuff with Lovecraft and some other books that are in the public domain with horror as well. So that's a really fun place. That's the King of Creepy. The link to that is in the description down below. Jill edits all those videos does a fantastic job, tons of sound effects, lots of high production stuff. I'm always impressed by it. It's pretty much like 
if I were to break it down into a sentence, if you enjoy campfire stories, I think you'd enjoy that channel. Yeah, it's really fun. I love making it. And something else that I love making, I have a website called EnchantedGlamour.com. That's Enchanted, G-L-A-M-O-R.com, where I make awesome stuff. I make jewelry, I make resin pieces, I make lots of really cool stuff. I'm going to be putting more stuff on there in the near future. So you guys should go check that out. It's really cool. I make comic book resin, I make normal resin pieces, I make some really cool things like necklaces and earrings and bracelets. And I think that they're all really unique and kind of tell a little bit of a story when you wear them them. So I think that they're really cool and you should definitely check them out. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. There'll be more Pokemon like we said before and all kinds of other stuff on this channel. I appreciate Jill having me on. I'm not in every video, but I really like doing these. So have a fantastic day, everybody. I hope you guys loved this video as much as I loved making it. Bye!